Hey guys, I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks. I got to get it off my plate. Um, why, when you cut a wire for a given frequency, uh, do you always end up cutting it shorter than physics would have you believe it, it ought to be? What am I talking about? Well, let's look here at the, uh, the old rules of the thumb. The physics says that the relationship between frequency and wavelength is uh, based on the speed of light. You take the speed of light, divide by the wavelength, you get the frequency, assuming you're using the, the right units for everything. And if you simplify that down, you get 492 divided by the frequency in megahertz gives you the length of a half wave. Uh, half wave is what we're usually looking at for an antenna. So that's what all these rules of uh, the thumb are based on. And uh, unfortunately, they mostly come from hams in the U.S., so you're all going to have to suffer through feet for this one. Um, but it doesn't matter. Theory comes out the same. 492 over F gets you a half wave in feet if you just use the speed of light. Well, cut your antenna using that. It's going to be a mile too long, uh, which is why we have the updated rules of the thumb, which are 468 over the frequency in megahertz. If you want a half wave that you're gonna use as a dipole, that you're gonna hang the entire thing up in the air and center feed it, but all the way down to 423 divided by the frequency in megahertz. If you are building a uh, vertical or a random wire or something where you essentially only have uh, one, one wire doing your radiating. So why the discrepancy? Why do you have to cut your wire shorter, sometimes a lot shorter based on what you're doing with it, uh, than what seems like a simple physical relationship? Well, you'll hear a couple explanations for this. People like to throw the term velocity factor around. And a velocity factor is a really, really important characteristic of transmission lines. <laughs> it's not really a thing for radiating elements of, uh, of individual wires. Um, it's handy to express things that way because everybody kind of understands it and says, okay, I got to lengthen or shorten my stuff by X percent. So it can make your calculations easy, um, but it really isn't the right way to describe what's going on in a, in a single wire. The velocity factor of one wire by itself is 0.999999. It's, it's really just the difference in the speed of the electrons in the copper or aluminum medium versus in free space, and that ain't much. And if you're lonely enough to brave the ham radio forums, you'll hear guys going on and on about this end of wire effect. Uh, it's a grand theory of how there's an impedance mismatch when you get to the end of the wire and, and hit free and open space and uh, what happens at that impedance transformation. Um, clearly, there is an impedance bump there, but it's not the kind of thing that would change the length of your wire uh, for any reason, particularly at, at a resonant frequency. Uh, by the time you get to the end of the wire, your wire should have radiated all of the energy at resonance. Um, and so there's not much hitting that impedance bump at the end. Now, in order to figure this out, what we need to do is we need to go back and take a look at well, what is really an antenna, even if it's just a piece of wire. Well, it's a resonant circuit. It has resistance. That's the only thing we like to pay attention to because uh, it's easy. Um, but any antenna, even just a piece of wire, has both capacitance and inductance. Uh, at least if it's a real antenna, uh, these are not going to be zero values. And capacitance and inductance both act to virtually elongate the antenna. Um, in fact, in some cases, this is a really useful behavior. Uh, there are products on the market that take advantage of this. On the left there is a Wolf River coil, which is a, an adjustable, tunable inductor. It's a, it's a big inductor in some cases. Um, ham sticks use this same idea, winding wire around the fiberglass post. Uh, these are bottom-loaded antennas. Put uh, an inductor in there and make your antenna resonate at a frequency lower than the physical geometry of whatever your radiating element is. Um, same on the right. This is the capacitive version of it. Uh, this is W8UZZ's capacitance hat. Um, capacitive hats are generally used at lower frequencies. Um, 
80 meter inverted L is a great example of, of this. You've got a radiator that should be too short for 80 meters, um, but because the top half of it bends and, and goes over and puts extra capacitance at the top of the wire, um, it gets longer virtually, electrically, than it is physically. Um, used to be real popular uh, for 160 meter antennas, these umbrella things, um, and in AM broadcast, you get you know, down into the hundreds of kilohertz. It's really, really hard to build an antenna that tall, and a capacitive hat is a, is a good solution to that. If we go back to our plain old straight piece of wire, uh, it turns out that L isn't really zero, but it is so small that it's pretty safe to ignore it. Um, you're going to have a hard time measuring it as long as you do have an actual straight wire in relatively free space. You can pretty much ignore the inherent inductance of that wire. You cannot, however, ignore the inherent capacitance of the wire. Now, I've got a link down here in the third sub bullet if you want the details of how this work. Uh, he's got pictures and everything. It's a great explanation of why a piece of wire um, is really modeled more like a, just a cylinder um, and is in fact a capacitor. As you start shoving electrons on there and those electrons start repelling each other, you're storing charge on this wire. That's the definition of capacitance. And as you might expect, as you make the wire longer, this inherent capacitance gets bigger because there's more wire. Now, I know you all remember this from your ham radio tech exam, but there's a formula that says, okay, for a given capacitance at a given frequency, what's the reactance going to be? How, how much resistance to the flow of energy is that capacitance going to provide um, at a given frequency? And uh, the formula is here on the screen. The thing you'll note about it is that the frequency component is in the denominator of the fraction, which means as the frequency number gets bigger, the capacitive reactance gets smaller. So think about that in terms of harmonics. I've got some capacitive reactance at a frequency, seven megahertz. If I go to 21 megahertz, my frequency is three times as high. My capacitive reactance is only going to be one third of what it was at seven megahertz. So this is why your harmonics don't land where you, where you think they're going to land. You cut your wire for, for 7.1, 7.2 megahertz on the 40 meter band. And the capacitance that's inherent in the wire is artificially making it longer. So you physically go cutting it shorter to get it to resonate. The combination of physical length and inherent capacitance, it resonates at the frequency you want. But then you go up to the 15 meter band and all of a sudden the capacitance isn't stretching your wire out anymore. So what do you have? You just have this wire that you cut short and so it resonates high in your thought process anyway. It's resonating higher than it should on the 15 meter band because it's not being artificially lengthened. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, so far as how it helps me out with the DX Commander, it lets me understand uh, the relationship that I really have between wire length and frequency. And uh, since I have a couple of good measured points, uh, specifically the 30 meter element and the 10 meter element, uh, you can plot a line between those two lengths and frequencies and essentially anything you want in between there it's going to fall right on that line uh, that's how i cut the 17 meter element bang spot on 1.0 swr uh, very first try it was just by extrapolating between the two ends Moving forward, there's going to be two completely separate threads going here. Uh, it's fall. Kids are going back to school, which hopefully will get me a little bit more shop time. Got a bunch of organization projects down there and uh, one piece of furniture that it is time to build. And fall also is, of course, the best and prettiest of the park weather. So uh, we're going to spend some time out in the parks. I'll show you what one of these pod activations looks like live. And with any luck, we'll get to do a little bit of a head to head comparison between a couple of different antenna types. So cross your fingers for some good weather. And in the meantime, stay safe, YouTube.